All right, so you're coming to Pinheiros, Sao Paulo, and you're like, hey, Kyle, where can I find the best coffee shops, best cocktails, best craft beer? And, of course, the thing everyone always wants to know, where's the best chocolate factory? The good news is, in this video, you'll get answers to all of those questions, and I'm going to show you the price of everything that I buy along the way. And last but not least, you'll see a 21st floor Airbnb in the Pinheiros neighborhood. So let's go. The next minute or so, you'll see here in the video everything this Airbnb offers, including the amenities, a heated pool, a playground, a gym, etc. But you probably want to know the price, so let's jump into the price. If you look at this on Airbnb, it's listed as $45.98 a night, which is a great deal, all things considered. In reality, you're going to pay more than the listed price on Airbnb because there's the cleaning fee, there's the Airbnb service fee. But for simplicity's sake, let's just leave it at the per night price listed on Airbnb, which is $45.98. Your overall per night cost is going to depend on how long you stay at your chosen Airbnb. And one of my favorite things about staying at an Airbnb is the keyless entry. When I got here from the airport, I didn't have to go to a hotel check-in desk. And sometimes they require your passport only. They won't even take a driver's license. But here I just showed up, uh, rang the doorman at the outside gate, told him you know, who I was, what apartment I was staying in. They opened the gate and I came up here and was able to get in the apartment without any paperwork or you know, any lines or anything like that. And it's also nice when you leave the apartment and go to a restaurant or go get a coffee, go to the grocery store. You don't have to worry about uh, you know, taking keys with you or losing the keys or locking yourself out. Um, you just have to make sure you remember the code. So that is a huge plus for staying at Airbnbs. And as you can see here in the video, it also has a kid's playground, a heated pool, and a weight room. You know, it's all about perspective and it obviously depends on your budget, but if you compare that to a really nice hotel, a really nice hotel is gonna be at least $100 a night. So in that respect, for a short-term stay, it's a steal because you have a killer view, um, a nice apartment, you have a kitchen, you have a washer. But at the same time, you could also find places to live in Sao Paulo for you know, maybe $500 a month. Obviously, it's not going to be the best neighborhood, but you certainly could find it. Maybe, maybe even $300 a month, depending on what you're looking for. All right, so now let's go check out the neighborhood here in Pinheiros. I'm going to show you some really helpful information. Not only am I going to show you some bars, restaurants, and coffee shops, what they look like and things like that, I'm also going to show you the price of the things that I buy. So it's going to be a latte, a croissant, breakfast, a Moscow Mule cocktail, an old-fashioned cocktail, craft beer, etc. all right here in the Pinedos neighborhood. So let's go. All right, Coffee Lab. Um, I love this place. There's a reason I chose this one first to show you today. Coffee Lab was incredible. It had amazing coffee, and not only did it have amazing coffee, it's also a barista school. So they actually have classrooms. I wasn't able to take a picture or video of the classrooms because class was in session. I didn't want to interrupt. That coffee Lab is super cool. Um, the decoration, you know, the baristas are walking around with hard hats on. Um, they also have on the menu these really cool, like, comparisons. So you can order basically a Brazilian cappuccino and a Italian cappuccino, and they, they make both, and they show you the differences, and they explain the differences. And they also do the same with some espresso. Um, and also just with black coffee. They, they give you like an average coffee and, and then a top tier coffee and explain the differences as well. So that's a pretty cool menu idea. And yeah, just everything about this place is very original, top notch quality. Um, the, the people that work there were super nice. Highly recommend uh, Coffee Lab if you can only go to one coffee shop in the Pinheiros area, Coffee Lab. And to be specific, I don't think it's actually in the, officially in the neighborhood of Pinheiros. It might be in Villa Madalena but it's close enough. And the price for the cappuccino comparison was $4.90. All right, everyone wants uh, to know about the hidden gems. Well, here's one for you, St. Chico Padaria. There was a line out the door full of locals at 7.30 a.m., so you know they're doing something right. So their bread is delicious. They sell great coffee. Um, they also sell coffee for you to take home to your kitchen. They also sell wine, and they have fresh fruit juices uh, made every day as well. So um, I really like this place, and now let me tell you a little bit about what I ordered here. I got a croissant, a latte, and a little pau de queijo cheese bread, and the total bill came out to $5.79. Highly recommend this place, and it definitely is a hidden gem in the Pinedos neighborhood. All right, guys, next one is Futuro Refectorio. This one officially is in Villa Madalena, but close enough to Pinedos, almost the same neighborhood, really. Um, don't be fooled by my video 
because in this video you'll see there's not anyone really eating here, but I got here at 9.01 a.m. I believe, and they opened at 9. So I got here first thing in the morning. Also, Sao Paulo just came out of a lockdown, so don't be fooled by the empty tables here. Now, let's talk about what I got to eat. I got this plate here, eggs, bacon, toast, avocado, apple pie latte. I had to try it, and I also had an orange juice um, not pictured here, but all that came out to 69 hay eyes, or basically $12.96. So pretty affordable for, for getting a coffee, a juice, and all that food as well. Um, but yeah, overall, this place obviously has a, has a cool vibe, very unique vibe to it. You know, I can't imagine what it must be like whenever it's actually full. Um, I hear in pre-COVID times or whenever Sao Paulo is not on lockdown, um, you know, the weekends, it's almost impossible to get in here. So, yeah, again, don't be fooled by the empty tables here. As you can see, it's a cool place and pretty good food, too, at a reasonable price, especially for being in one of the nicer neighborhoods here in Sao Paulo. Um, so yeah, so let's head out of here and go on to the next place. Okay, guys, next place, Opasquim Bar y Prosa. Wow, what's not to like about this place? Um, well, you could say, well, Kyle, there's no one there right now. Um, and that's true. Again, I got here right when they were opening. And again, Sao Paulo was just coming out of lockdown. But you can obviously see how well designed this place is. Um, also, from what I've heard from locals, is that, is that this place is a live music hotspot. So on the weekends, they normally have live music. Um, great drinks here, great food. Again, really cool environment, really cool, uh, well designed place here as well. Now, I was pretty excited to see that they have, as they say here, Moscow Muleys, which are Moscow Mules, and they had a Mango Maracuya Moscow Mule. If you don't know what Maracuya is, it's one of the first words you need to learn when you come to Latin America, but it, it, just, it just means passion fruit flavored, so, um, which we don't really have that much in the U.S., uh, because it comes from this fruit called Maracuya. But anyway, really good. Maracuya Mango Moscow Mule. I had to try it, so that is what I ordered. The price for the Mango Maracuya Moscow Mule came out to 32.66 hay eyes, which is $6.06. So again, one of the best bars in a city of 20, 25 million people, and you can get a Moscow Mule for just $6.00. Another reason that I love living in Latin America. Okay, let's move on to the next place. Okay, so this next place is the Pinedos Market. And like most farmer's markets, you can buy whatever you need food-wise here. But I came here with a specific um, goal in mind, and that was to visit Mokoto Cafe. So this is a cafe version of a bigger, more f famous restaurant in another part of Sao Paulo, also called Mokoto. So what I got here is the Peshajina, which is a fish plate. And um, here's actually the translation for you from Google Translate. It's uh, Piraruku, uh, which is, I guess, a Brazilian fish. Brazilian fish? In sauce with coconut milk, rice, and bijou farofa. Farofa is a Brazilian, I don't even know what it is. Uh, I don't even know how to put it into words. like a, a powder thing you mix with beans and rice. With chestnut. So there you have it. Piraruku in sauce with coconut milk, rice, and bijou farofa with chestnut. And the price came out to, I know this part, 42 hay eyes, which is $7.96. And yes, it was very good, tasted homemade, and I would highly recommend it. All right, next up, Goose Island Beer Company. Now, if you know beer, you've probably heard of this brewery. It's actually out of the Chicago area. It's not a Brazilian brewery. Um, they have a few Chicago locations and a few international locations, and they actually are currently owned by Anheuser-Busch. Now, I, I came in here on a Tuesday afternoon, and there were some people here. You might see them in the video here, but uh, again, I think I got there right when they were opening, and it was a Tuesday afternoon right um, you know, the week after Sao Paulo came out of lockdown, so keep that in mind. I'm sure on a Friday night there's a lot more people here. Now, the beer I got was great, and it came out to a whopping $2.35. If craft beer is your thing, now let's head to a local Brazilian tap house that has over 650 beers to choose from. Emporio Alto G. Pinheiros. I love this place. The environment, as you can see, is just a, a cool, chill environment. 
They have great beer and, again, lots to choose from, over 650 beers to choose from here. Also, something you need to know about Brazilians, they love beer. When it's hot outside, beer is the only answer for them. you got to know that. Brazilians love beer. Here is the beer that I ordered, and it came out to a whopping $2.26. All right, that wraps up the craft beer portion of this video. Right next door to here, Emporio Alto G. Pinheiros, there is a whiskey bar called Caledonia. So let's go over there and try some whiskey. So entering Caledonia, you can see it has a really cool vibe. Um, I, I really liked how this place was laid out. Now, when it came to ordering whiskey, um, I'm from the States, and I don't know what I was expecting, but I was hoping to hear about some whiskey I'd never heard about or something local here that I never tried. But a lot of the whiskeys um, I had already tried or heard of, they were uh, a lot of American brands um, here in Caledonia. So I ended up ordering an Old Fashioned with Wild Turkey Rye Whiskey, and the price came out to pretty much a U.S. bar price, $9.48. You know, if you really like whiskey and you find yourself in Brazil or Latin America, you, you've probably found out that the Latin American brands of whiskey, whiskey just really aren't that good. And on top of that, there's just not that much demand for whiskey drinks in Latin America. So if you find yourself in Sao Paulo, near Pinheiros and you really want some good whiskey, definitely go check out Caledonia here in Pinheiros. Okay, this next place is Canchino do Acarajé. Now, if you don't know, Acarajé is a food from the north of Brazil, the state of Bahia. Think about it like a little seafood sandwich, okay? So I was really craving it. I tried it recently, so I went here to try it out. And I, I got to be honest, I, I like I liked how this place uh, felt. It's, it's, it's just a very simple place. It's on a street with a lot of other um, kind of simple restaurants and bars. But I got to be honest, I got like the, 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 the waiter called it like the Big Mac version. And um, it was okay, but the, the first time I had Acarajé, which was a restaurant in Rio de Janeiro, well, it was a lot better. So I don't know if it was just a bad day or the seafood was a little old, but I got to be honest, it wasn't. My favorite, and actually, I can't say I would recommend that you get the Acarajé from here. But on the drink side, I did get a Caipirinha. The Caipirinha was exquisite, super good. It was just a classic uh, Limao, Caipirinha de Limao, lime Caipirinha. So I do recommend that, but I can't say that I love the Acarajé here. And the price for the Acarajé and the Caipirinha came out to $10.26. So I was walking by and I found this Selena Hostel location. It's the Villa Madalena Sao Paulo location. And if you don't know, Selena is probably, they probably have the strongest worldwide brand of hostels. They kind of have a co-working hostel uh, business model, which obviously suits um, a lot of travelers well in, in today's, you know, work from home or work from anywhere environment. Um, so I wanted to pop in here and just kind of see what this location was like. So Celine does a really good job of providing a lot of co-working space. As you can see here, you can also get private rooms that are pretty affordable. So you can have, um, you know, your privacy, but when you want to meet people or you need to get work done and you need fast Wi-Fi, it's all in-house at the hostel. Um, so again, Selena probably does a better job of this than any other brand worldwide when it comes to hostels. And uh, again, here is the Villa Madalena location. Next up is Dango Chocolate Factory. Now, let me say this is a great fun for the whole family thing to do. This is a great date idea. This is a great group of friends thing to do. Now, the definition of Dango is not really easy to put into words, whether it's Portuguese or English. But straight from the Dango Chocolate Factory's website, it says that Dango is a very Brazilian word. It can mean many good things. Tenderness, care, affection, exchange, a gift, and it can also be used to refer to our loved ones. So there's the best definition that I can find on what Dango actually means. Now as for the place, I thought this place was really cool. It's three stories, and when you walk in on the first floor, you see these big machines making the chocolate, and they also have a breakfast bar where you can order coffee or cookies or breakfast or a chocolate drink, etc. I'll show you more of that here in a second. And then on the second floor, they have more of how the chocolate is made, and they also have more activities for kids. They can actually design their own chocolate bar, basically. 
And then on the third floor, they have a restaurant that is outdoors, a big terrace or patio that you can actually sit down and have lunch at. All right, so I got here in the morning, so I ordered breakfast at the breakfast bar. I got scrambled eggs here, French press coffee, and a cacao drink, which was super thick. It's almost like melting, putting a Hershey bar in the microwave and melting it and drinking it. That's what it felt like, except it's actually natural and not artificially sweetened. That came out to 40 hay eyes, which is $7.66. Overall, I had a great experience here at Dango, and I would highly recommend it when you come to Pinedos here in Sao Paulo. All right, guys, I've never done a donut store commentary before, so bear with me. But here is Mr. Donuts. They have donuts and coffee. As you can see here, they have Kit Kat donuts, cinnamon roll donuts, and a plethora of options on their menu that are not, that is not, plethora of options, plethora, that uh, plethora of options that is not pictured here in the video because they're kept in the back as well. So, Mr. Donuts, highly recommend. One donut was $1.63. It was good, but I didn't want to eat it all because it's super sweet, you know, and I'm getting older. All right, let's go on to the next place. Layback Park. So this place has a pretty cool concept. It's part skate park. But then it also has these containers that serve different things like poke, acai, beer, cocktails, etc. Also, they have these pretty cool jerseys. Um, I'm a big basketball fan, so they have Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. And then just outside Layback Park, they have this mural of Michael Jordan, which I think is pretty cool as well. Um, and this location is right next to a lot of other bars uh, here in Pinheiros as well. So uh, pretty cool. If you want to change things up, you can come watch people skate or Skate yourself if you're a skater. And, uh, yeah, I thought this was a pretty cool concept. All right, guys, it's a Saturday night in Pinedos, and I'm going to leave you right here on the street so that you can get a feel for what it's really like. If you found this video helpful at all, please like this video. And let me say thank you so much for watching.